clear that sort of uh, uh, the, the trade balances are also a little bit distorted now by uh, what is happening in energy markets, but the euro area is operating on a current account uh, surplus. So there is absolutely no need for us to desire a weaker exchange rate because of trade imbalances. You're data dependent and you're looking very closely at the inflationary trends, particularly around energy. We don't even have a ban implemented yet on Russian energy imports into the EU. That suggests that the rest of the year, if that ban is imposed, is going to see even higher energy generated inflation. How concerned are you about that specifically? Well, again, I would have then to come to an assessment to what extent this increases the risk that this inflation will become entrenched that we will see second round effects through wages, etc. We are beginning to see second round effects also in uh, the euro area. And that in and of will decide what sort of monetary policy re reaction is appropriate. Uh. Already, as the market has anticipated what you're going to do at the council, we've seen a repricing of, of debt. Um, the spread on the 10-year boon to the Italian paper already at 2% here. Do we need to be concerned at all that these trends that we're seeing for Spain, for Greece, for Portugal's paper, that these trends are going to significantly force up borrowing costs for the most indebted nations in Europe? Do we need to be worried again about a taper tantrum or some concern about sovereign default for Europe? At this moment, I don't think that there is a need for concern. I think the spreads that we're currently seeing are well in line with historical experience and can also be explained if you look at the economic uh, fundamentals. They would become a concern if we sort of got these uh, disorderly, self-fulfilling spirals that we did see in 2012 and in 2020. Both times, the ECB stepped up to the plate because we all in the governing council, we understand that we need a certain degree of homogeneity in monetary transmission for our policy to be effective in every corner of the euro area. Those would be the conditions where I would be concerned, but not in the current conditions. There are a group of council members that take a more disciplined line on spending. The Austrians, the Germans, you the Dutch. As we look at now the suspension of the fiscal rules through to 2023, are you worried within that small community that some governments are going to abuse that opportunity to borrow when they shouldn't be borrowing? No, I, I, I would not use the word abuse. I think these are extraordinary circumstances. So the fact that these rules have been suspended for another year, I think, is understandable. But the subtext was very clear. There is additional space, but there is no need to definitely use that space. And you should be aware of the side effects that that might, for instance, have on spending and on inflation. So the more excess spending eh, would be, that would be mandated, the, the more difficult, of course, also the task of the ECB would be to rein in inflation.